Hello. Hi. You look so pretty. Thanks. I did a subtle, subtle lift today. I mean, I'm totally here for it. Okay, you are also screen. Look beautiful. Uh -huh. Um, so can you see my screen? yes, I can. Okay. We are also being recorded right now. Hmm? The recording started. FYI. Oh, awesome. Okay, good. Just so you know. Um, awesome. Okay, cool. All right, so, so when you start to let people in, I'm probably going to get muted again, right? No, I did something yesterday. I wasn't thinking. I I did mute all. Okay. But I don't I don't need to do that. I just what I was trying to be proactive, but it it backfired because everybody should be muted upon entry because I turned that setting on. I um, was. I had to turn it off. Okay, cool. So if it gets weird and I mute every and I can I can hit that mute all button, I'll make sure to like unmute you immediately. I'll just be like, yeah, just get some attention. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Do you think we should have a holding message in the chat? Like, oh, good idea. feel free to post comments, any thoughts, comments, questions during the presentation. Yeah, how do we do that? Um, so if you open the group chat, I just yeah. typed in last time. And I think we could just send a message to everyone so that when they log in, I mean, obviously we're gonna have to say something too, I think. Poor right, Chuck is locked something. in the bedroom with Cece and she's having a meltdown. All from the storm. Yeah. Actually, I'm surprised Milo isn't trying to climb up on me. It's good, but. All righty. I don't know why I'm nervous for this one. I know. So far, there's only four people waiting, if that makes you feel better. And one is Shayna. <laughs> it does make me feel a little better. A little better. There's still four minutes. Was the invite not updated or was I just a dummy and didn't accept it? No, I, I was literally updating it, I think, like seconds before you sent that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so no, don't worry. Okay, perfect. Because I, I sent those out so long ago to hold the date before I had everything organized. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, did I maybe like decline it when she sent the new one? Like, no, that was me. Who knows? Okay, I did a chat. And then... Awesome. Okay, we've got four people waiting. I wonder, I'm really curious if we'll have a lot of people or if we won't. I think we'll either have one, obviously one or the other, but I don't think it'll be like a middle mm -hmm. round because I think I either agree. people have a ton of time and they're all really comfortable with Zoom or it's kind of like, I don't have time for this. I feel better about the, I kind of liked doing the team one first because it did give us a Me too. Power. Yeah, I feel like we were able to get like our toes dipped in without it being um, super nerve wracking. I had to raise my computer because when I was oh flipping my, my notes, you could see it yesterday. And now I just have to like slowly. I didn't notice it, but I guess I wasn't paying the full, full attention. It's terrible because, or I guess I could just like throw it on the ground. Just like, <laughs> just like, done. <laughs> or I could be like, I love it. You Thanks. know, I wonder, okay, it's 57. I wonder if I can do something. View options. Um, something, there's a way. I, I was trying to figure this out during the first webinar where you could hide the participants, but I don't think you can do that. Your audio is a little yeah. again. Are you serious? Dude, yeah. I don't know what it is. This is different headphones. And I haven't had a problem. Now it sounds great. It's, okay. it's been great the whole time. It's just for whatever you were trying to just do, I, I it went out. But I, I like leaned forward. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that, that's really good. Okay, good. Um, I'm sure it's because we're, 
I mean, I don't think these laptops are meant. Okay, we have six people waiting. I have to close the door. Yeah, you're gonna have to. You have one minute to decide. They've all been released from, I open the door, I like go by the door, Stacey's there, Milo's there. So, hope for the best. We have 10 people waiting. <laughs> All right, should, I'm going to let people in. Okay, okay. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome to our spring 2020 forecast webinar. We're gonna give people maybe about another minute to join. So just hang tight for another second or two. Wish we had some cool like elevator background music. <laughs> no, that should be a thing. Like Zoom <laughs> like waiting music. <laughs> I'm surprised Zoom hasn't thought of it yet. It's coming. You can forecast. <laughs> well, there's so many awkward silences in the beginning of every Zoom meeting. We should. Maybe you and I start a side business. Anyone listening, forget you heard this. <laughs> okay, we got a few more people popping in. Okay. Well, it is officially one o'clock. So I think we're gonna get started. So we'll start off by introducing ourselves. So I know many of you, and I'm sure many of you have joined our the past few webinars that we've done, um, but I'm Shay Odell Scott. I'm the trend forecaster at CID, and I'm here with Alana. Yeah, uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> the assistant creative director and storyteller at CID um, and I'm just very lucky that I get to work really closely with Shay um, and she keeps me in, in tip-top shape. <laughs> Alana definitely does the same for me. <laughs> Great, so we're going to be working together today to take you through the spring 2020 multifamily design forecast and thank you all for tuning in today for um, being the next half hour or so with us. We're really looking forward to it. This issue of our forecast, um, it, I want to say it was a little bit different because of all that is going on, specifically the conversation around design with around health and for our current pandemic conditions. As always with our forecast, we want to really be looking always to the future and not being super reactive to things that are happening in the now and things that could really give it that COVID date stamp. It's something we've talked about a lot. Um, and we were lucky enough to host a series of both internal and external roundtable discussions specifically around designing with the current COVID climate in mind. Many of you on this call may have contributed, so thank you so much. And we definitely took a lot of those findings, a lot of these conversations that we had, and we put it into this forecast. So this forecast is not fully around around pandemic or COVID design, but you'll definitely see elements sprinkled throughout. And then also, we did send out the full digital version of this forecast last week. And what we're going to be sharing today is really just, it's very edited for time and for ease of conversation. So if you feel that anything's missing, take a look at the full version or shoot us an email and let us know if you did not receive that link. And we will go ahead and get kicked off. Oh, also, we are happy to have this be a very casual kind of collaborative conversation. So feel free to jump in, chime in on that Zoom group chat panel and you know, share any comments or, or questions. And we are happy to kind of pop back and forth between the presentation and answering questions just to keep it very casual, very collaborative, the CID way. Awesome. <laughs> 
All righty, Shay. So with that segue, I think we're going to go into kind of the first, the first segment that we like to talk about, and that is engaging and really specifically designing for your market. Um, this is something CEID has been incredibly passionate about for, for basically as long as I can remember, is looking beyond demographics and, and age and things like that, and really taking into consideration the lifestyle segments and habits of people and you know how in certain sections the same age group may you know kind of adapt and behave in different ways and appreciate different things so our first segment um, that we're going to kind of spotlight is the young professionals so this one is essentially our millennials are growing up we're a growing up bunch which is great <laughs> um it's slow slow to do it but but it is kind of a very you know rising market um not a lot of kids it's it's you know starting very early to couple up but we're really kind of looking at it being highly highly mobile super social um a lot of the new cities that we see kind of really starting to build up and get a lot of new industries where we're seeing this market really um kind of pinpointed into so our top five ways in designing for them is co-working sharing economy sustainability fitness and social events so you know one of the really important things to think about with with co-working is how covid as as shay kind of said has changed the way we work and i think that an excellent example of it here. Um, Shay and myself are still working from home and I'm sure some of you are too. Um, but we really need to start to take into consideration making sure that we've created spaces that are really allowing for a, a really successful co-working space. You know, so thinking about more of those micro offices and really custom making them. Do we want to make it that it could be a dog friendly uh, micro office so people can bring their pets in or perhaps we have for the person who's a little bit more concerned with fitness, maybe we do one of the, the pedal desks or, or some of the, the bike, the treadmill, the laptop treadmill. That's a scary one. <laughs> I don't trust myself with that. Uh, next is our sharing economy. I think just as, as, as things grow and, and change and people are moving around a lot, we don't end up having a ton of things. Also, you don't need to really own everything. So we're taking the idea of kind of that pantry share and, and we've, we've completely blown it up and thinking way, way beyond that. So whether it be kitchen equipment, office equipment, makerspace equipment, um, a Lux utility share is something we've really seen kind of popping up where you've got like tile cleaner, small little um, hardware tools, hammers, things like that, that you may not have, but definitely could probably use. Of course, sustainability, this is, this is, I think, something that's prevalent probably throughout our whole presentation. Um, we have, you know, really just kind of started to look at ways outside of your, you know, your atypical. So, you know, reclaimed materials, gray water systems, of course, our low VOC, uh, natural lighting, renewable energy, electrical vehicle charging, bike and scooter share, <laughs> one of our personal favorites. Um, recycling and composting, and then having a lot of green spaces. Next is fitness. Um, so we've got, we're looking at our virtual fitness offerings, making sure that we've got, you know, really good spaces where our residents can stream fitness classes, or they can, you know, tap into a Zoom and get a private class. So really allowing for that, that custom kind of bespoke experience. Pop-up classes, unique equipment. Um, the, the, the aerial silks are something that's always exciting, a ski simulator, rock climbing, boxing, the flex spaces for your DIY workouts, and then your old school gymnasium is also something we, you know, we, we really find such a great nostalgic connection to where it's the pommel horse and the hanging rings and, and all that kind of fun stuff. And next is our social events. Um, I think when we initially introduce the young professionals, one of the key factors with them is, is being social. Most of the time when you're moving around, you, you know, it's, it's harder to meet people. So create spaces that encourage people to come and interact with, and we make sure that we're setting them up to have, you know, the proper programming. We're really allowing for our residents to foster with one another. And it also helps resident retention. When you know your neighbors, you want to stay there and you're happy. So it could be anything from pickling classes, weaving workshops, 
homemade milk classes, bingo and beer, bark parks, any sort of really outside the box, fun and exciting events, but really looking at it when we are at our initial visioning and our initial space planning phase, that we're thinking about that and we are, you know, accounting for it. So at the tail end, it's not like, where could we do this? Thanks, Alana. The next psychographic that we want to talk about today is fit and well. And this is the first time we've actually formally reported on the psychographic, but it is one that we have been tracking for a while. And this group is really a response from this huge, massive growth that we all know about of the wellness industry. And we're actually seeing a brand new psychographic come out of this industry. So fit and well, it's really about this group that lives their whole life under this holistic kind of umbrella of health being a priority. Well-being is a primary way that they handle stress and fitness is social as well. And then we, we do have a little stat here about the importance with, of this fitness and well, wellness to millennials. And we all know about that and we're actually seeing Gen Z, they're actually expected to surpass this number in health and wellness. So it'll be very interesting to, to track as this trend and this group go forward. And then for our top five, we have well-building, whole self, restore, active social, and programming. So under well-building, that is all about creating a space that is health starts at home. So we're talking about in the units and in all of the amenity, amenity areas as well, and designing a space that residents really feel good going home to. So this is everything from the, that purified air and water, circadian lighting, Having outdoor spaces, access to the outside, and these biophilic are really important. And then number two is sort of the same concept, this holistic idea, but it's applied to the self. So the fit and well approach is, it focuses on the mental and the physical aspects of health, but applied through all areas. So definitely we start with sleep. So focus on soundproof for better sleep at night. We're talking about food, what you're putting into your body, remedies, remedy bar, and then also things that we might not think about initially when we think about wellness, but are really important when you're thinking about it holistically, which is curated music. How does it make you feel? And then elements of, of play and humor to give you those bursts of joy and levity throughout your day too. And then number three is restore. And this idea here is that we're going through our life. We know how stressful it is to balance work and family and friends and other responsibilities. And then we've seen these workouts that have become so popular, these super high intense workouts. So your body, we're all feeling this need to really take extra time for ourselves to recover both mentally from the stress of every day and physically from the stress of the intense workouts that we're putting ourselves through. <laughs> Not me though. Not me. No, just walk the dog. That's it. Um, so for this idea, we have meditation pods, some of this recovery tech equipment um, that's a little more technical, a little more fitness geared, even having a stretch zone that just has a few foam rollers, some stretch bands, and then maybe having a few massage chairs in your fitness or even having a digital detox event where you just say, put your phone away for a little bit. And then four is active social. I, I think this one, I personally love this one. I think it's really fun. It's all about people who we know that this fitness and this health is part of their life and they extend that into their social life as well. So riding bikes with friends is what, they, what we're doing, walking trails, um, organized sports leagues like beach volleyball, ones that are social, social sport leagues, but you're working out, but it's social, frisbee golf, those kinds of things. Silent disco events that can be really fun, but you're moving your body. Um, I think that's really cool. And then number five is programming. And this is just build community and engage residents through unique fitness and wellness focused events. So here we really tried to get some, something different here. My, the rule here was think beyond yoga a little bit. We love yoga, but think beyond yoga. So here we have book of the month club, grow your own microgreens, fermentation workshop, and resident led events, maybe like dance cardio, kickboxing, breath work, all of these things that people have been really gravitating towards as we are going through our lives and dealing with the stress of everyday. Awesome. 
All right, so our next, and I think this may be our actual last featured segment, yes. pet parents. Um, as we kind of talked about before, you know, millennials are a little bit slower to start settling down and have and, and having children and, and families. So we're seeing a huge rise in pets and not only pets as, you know, your, your fun dog that you take for a walk, but your pets are your family, your priority, your children, and they are such an important part of your everyday life. Um, we've got kind of a really interesting statistic here when you really think globally about how many households are in the U.S. 67% of households have, have a pet, and I'm sure some of you may have heard my barking before, a little scared of thunderstorms. <laughs> uh, so our top five ways when we are designing for our pet parents, we've got outdoor spaces, pet friendly units, indoor spaces, creative programming, and, and some social share moments. So the first thing we're looking at with our outdoor spaces, and <laughs> Shay, you, got it, you put the best sentence in here. <laughs> our dog parks are no longer somewhere just to lift your leg. It's really about creating park spaces. This is not just a dog walk anymore. It can be a social place. You know, you can have really cool water bowls out there. Perhaps it's heated. Maybe it's you have misters in the summer. Um, and really activating it. Maybe we have some of the, the chess tables. We can do kind of like a chess and chase, but creating spaces for, for the parents themselves to, to use and to interact with and to engage with so that it really just becomes so much more of a prevalent part of the community. Uh, pet friendly units. One of our, um, one of our coworkers found this amazing, amazing installation concept where at the tail end of a countertop, the, there had been installed a pasta, like the water refilling for your pasta, and it was just over two dog bowls. And it was such a clever way that you could take, you know, an everyday thing, but make it so that it's this really custom and unique experience. So whether it be, you know, your full blown pet, pet fountain, whether it's just small built-ins or just the handheld shower head so you can wash your pet down, just being really thoughtful about you know, the, the end user and how, how our spaces are being used and how, you know, how a pet parent may, may be encouraged to, to rent or buy. Uh, and then our indoor spaces. So now we're talking about really our, our, our big amenity shared spaces. So understanding that, you know, maybe all our spaces can't be dog friendly, but let's start to think of places that we can do it and split places where we can blend those lines, whether it be some of our bar spaces that end up blending themselves to the outdoor bark and brew and dining, whether it's a micro office that we make pet friendly, whether it's, you know, we have kind of a really cool bar space and some kennels club, hang out with your dog there, but really starting to think about um, how, how we can have moments outside, outside of the norm with our, our friend friends. Alana. And then number four, we have programming. And so we all know that dogs and our pets in general are the ultimate conversation starter. It's so easy to strike up a conversation with a stranger by just saying, oh, your dog's cute. So we know <laughs> that we're all about building community. That's what we're all here. That's what multifamily is all about, building those strong communities so that you have a vibrant, vibrant community, vibrant property. We know that that plays into retention and so a great way to to build that community is by people's people's cute dogs so some ideas we have here are I mean dog treat or dog food cooking class agility course contests um, empty the pool if you empty the pool at the end of the summer before you do it have an annual dog swim really fun things like that and then also super shareable on social media too which leads us to number five which is social share where we ask the question, do you even have a pet if you don't take pictures of them? We all know the answer is no. <laughs> you don't have a dog if you don't take a picture of them. So here, fun ideas for social share are dog photo booth, dog kissing booth, like really cool modern dog houses, either indoor or outdoor, like Alana said, that you just can't help but take a picture of. Maybe cat hammocks as a move-in move -in gift for the units for our, we gotta give a shout out to our, our cat people there. And then having really beautiful Instagrammable treat display, maybe instead of just having the treat jar. 
So those are some ideas we have around around pet parents. And Shay, I, I got to, for the sake of, of Laura, we have a call. We presented this to to our to our CID team yesterday, and one of our one of our coworkers was like, she has a a lizard, and she was like, "What about lizards? All pets." So just so you guys know, all pets. We're here for all of yes, them. Lizards, <laughs> lizards too. Lizards too. <laughs> okay, so then that brings us to our second section, elevate. You go for move. And here, our first topic that we have for discussion is healthy spaces, and. Like we talked about a little bit in the beginning, we wanted to focus on not necessarily designing just for right now, just for COVID as it exists today or right now. None of us know what's going to happen in the next few months, and we don't want to make any permanent, very, you know, cost investment decisions right now. But we do know that healthy spaces have been trending upward for a while. We've been tracking like we talked about a little bit in the fit and well, psychographic wellness is huge and well-being and people really valuing their health. So in a world with or without COVID, we think a lot of these or really all of these healthy spaces ideas that there's a super valid place for them. Absolutely, Shay, that's an excellent segue just into some of the really kind of simple is we can start to look at designing for health. And like Shay said, you know, we don't have to just look at this as a response to COVID, but this is a global movement that was happening before, and we think it'll happen after. So it may just be the straw that broke the camel's back right now to start the conversation. So we're looking for spaces with, you know, can we make sure that we've got some really great natural light? If not, let's look into some circadian lighting, bottle filling stations with the RO water filters, biophilic elements, air filtration, you know, making sure that even the temperature where our spaces are feels right, it's not too hot and it's not too cold and being really thoughtful about, you know, not only physical health, but also mental health and allowing for some of those kind of, um, you know, those, those spaces that, that are welcoming to it. Speaking of a really kind of fun, fun space. This is a really, really simple um, way to talk about wellness in a way that doesn't take up really any square footage. It's just wall space. This is a photo from our office. Um, this is our wellness bar and it is something that we all love. So in there we've got all sorts of elixirs and potions, things for headaches and TMJ and muscle aches and stress, all sorts of different fun things that we can just kind of go in there and use. Um, you know, now we also are having face masks, gloves, but anything that you, we could use for, for wellness. So this is just a great way to show that we can do it for low cost, but have a really high impact, a very low, low take on our square footage. Well said. Thanks so much, Alana. And Alana mentioned earlier, I think, hand washing stations. And we're really inspired by this image here of this it, it appears to be more of a bottle filling station, but we love the idea of having a multi-purpose fountain, very beautiful, that can be used for hand washing and bottle filling because we all know that hand washing and hydration are just, just great for you. You just can't <laughs> deny it. And it, it's great too in a really high traffic amenity area. Like we love how it is right there in the mail room. Um, you know, you're touching all, all these random packages and it's a great, Place when you first walk in to wash your hands or you're on your way out, fill up your bottle. So we love how it really works with the space here. All right, next we have an in our in-depth air purifier. This is also something that is CID tested and approved. We have these in our office. We we actually I think may have six of them. Um, mm -hmm. Barb told us yesterday. Um, but they are really phenomenal. So it's an induct air purifier element. Um, and it really helps to eliminate your allergens, you know, your sick building syndrome, but it really just helps to freshen and circulate the air, which right now is really, really, really important. Um, and what's great about this is it's easy for new development and also renovation. Sometimes when we have air purifiers in renovation projects, it can be a little bit of a nightmare. Um, and, you know, we've been talking about these a little bit, just kind of ourselves and how can we give a visible value to them? Because we've kind of had the argument of, 
okay, well, we'll put all the money into it, but how do, the, how do our residents see that? How do they see it? How do they experience it? What's a way to make it almost physically tangible? So that's always something, you know, kind of inspiring and, and, and really thoughtful and a, and a good way to think about it. Um, and, you know, especially with, with COVID, we really want to start to think about purifying our air and our spaces because think about our co-working you know those spaces are going to get a little bit more used we've got a lot more micro offices we have those air spaces where we not may not have as much air circulation as we want so if we can start to purify that and really make sure it's it's clean and it's good and it's fresh we're you know, we're on the right path and now we have hand sanitizer to talk about and <laughs> really yep we got we got to talk about hand sanitizer so we love these two options here that we have featured. And the first one is, this is a, a actual product from RH. It's just a glass dispenser. And here we just want to say that, of course, there's a space for really industrial hand sanitizer dispensers, absolutely. But consider taking whatever hand sanitizer you can find and putting it in a really nice, non-industrial looking pump and simply labeling it sanitizer and placing it where you have need. It doesn't have to necessarily be this huge, very industrial feeling thing. And this is something that looks beautiful sitting out. It's labeled, it's easy to use, it's very approachable. And then another product that we have is by Touchland, and that is the one with the little purple on the right. And this is their Cub model sanitizer. And this is a little bit more of an industrial dispenser, and they have options that sit on the countertop like featured here or they have a stand for it as well and they comes in a couple different colors it's a really cool pro really cool product this company touchland is very design led for such an industrial typically industrial product so really really cool to keep an eye on them yeah and and to kind of just add to that something also when when you're when you're able to create something that doesn't look so crazy and industrial you feel safer in a space it's so true like you know covid and and cleaning your hands or smacking you in the face it's there for you to use mm -hmm. but it's not using a crazy fear tactic um so another kind of really, really clever thing um, that we've kind of come across are the idea of shoe poles at doors. You know, we're looking for ways that we can avoid contact um, in, in any sort of way. So we've got here our, our Santa door. We've got the step in pole. They're an easy retrofit. They can make doors nearly contactless. Um, these are just really kind of cool and exciting little options. And, you know, we really think we're gonna start to see a lot more of things like this, but um, you know, it's just something to kind of get excited about and start start subtly putting them in places. And then another option is the automatic swing door operator. And we've been looking at this one from Stanley. And this is one that can be relatively easily retrofit to any existing swing door. So this is just another option to make our doors touchless. So so we don't touch anything. Be like Jedi using the force. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Speaking of the force, um, mm -hmm. here we've got the Delta Trinsic Pro. This is just another spotlight that we wanted to look at um, because it does have it does have kind of the, the zero touch on and off for the taps. So it really helps to limit contact. These are, you know, they're a little bit more costly, but these are great for amenity spaces, especially when it's a it's a high traffic use area so things like this we're going to start to see being applied being applied a lot more um and then next this is one that really gets me super excited um it, not that it's this crazy exciting um um piece but what's great about it is we are seeing so many brands branching out of their norm and really looking to respond to our our current environment and the way the world is changing so this is the Combooth by Room. Room, uh, we all may be familiar, we may not. Um, they do a lot of the micro offices, the little pop-up, super easy. They're like an FF&E, kind of go and install that. The Combooth is in partnership with the meditation app, the Calm. 
Um, so it really just allows you an actual space to kind of go and meditate. It's got the beautiful frosted glass. It's got a really pretty nature inspired mural on the interior, but it really is such a great way to let our residents know we're thinking of your mental health as well. And it's just, it's just something that we, we think is going to be important and we want to, you know, we want to start to implement things like this. And this product here is another spotlight. This is the Colux. And this is a skylight that really imitates real sunlight. So the product that you see, that's not an actual skylight. It's not an actual window. It's a product that is installed in a windowless room, at least in this case. And not only does it imitate sunlight, but it actually has some of the therapeutic properties of our actual sun. And it just, it looks so beautiful in these spaces. You can see the shadow that it casts. It truly feels like you're getting light from outside. And here we have EMF free zone. So this is a slide that's really truly kind of on the brink of that, living in that forecast world. And here, yeah, here is just, this is something that we're really watching and tracking to see how this global conversation around EMFs and electricity and 5G and how we are so exposed to so much of this with our devices constantly on us, all the Wi-Fi everywhere. And we're starting to see more of an emergence around this global conversation. And we're not sure yet how this will affect us and our industry, but we're keeping an eye on it. So here, this is the top right is, is a book by somebody who's a leading kind of researcher in the area and a couple kind of products that have come out so far. And we're still sort of like the jury's still out and we're still waiting to see if these products have a, sp a place in any of our spaces, but it's something that we're watching in this kind of world of wellness and, and health. Well, another thing we're thinking about when we're, we're designing a world of wellness is we don't always have to create these spaces inside. You know, we take the biophilic design principles so that interior spaces feel really good, but Let's also encourage our residents to use the outdoor spaces and allow for some programming and allow for some lounging or any sort of various, you know, co-working, maker spaces, any of that. Um, you know, so maybe we've got bird feeders outside. Maybe we have beehives that I know that's something Shari is really excited about. I'm getting there. <laughs> but how cool would it be if it was, this was something that was really just exclusive to the property um, you know, and it's unique and memorable. Maybe it's pollinator gardens. Um, I remember growing up, my mom would specifically grow flowers that attracted hummingbirds. And it was just something really pretty for us to kind of go out and look at and just experience nature. It's so different to be outside experiencing it versus inside simulating it. Well said, Alana, thank you. Remedy Place is another, it's a location that we have spotlighted, and this is a wellness social club in LA. And the thing that we really love about this space is that a lot of times in this world of wellness, things can feel very, very feminine. And we know that half of the people that we're designing for most of the time are men, and we want everyone to feel welcome in these spaces. So we love that Remedy Place feels just a little bit more masculine, but still really, really approachable in their use of biophilia, their programming. And it was just, we think it was just really well done and definitely an inspiration for going in and designing some of these places around wellness, but definitely wanting them to feel really inclusive of everyone. Yeah, it's a way to look at redefining the aesthetic of what, what wellness yeah. is. It really kind of lends itself to whatever we want. Um, so I think our final kind of section to talk about with wellness is just looking at ways that we can do this in our units, understanding cost and, you know, availability for some of these things. Let's, let's look at what we perhaps can do. So whether it's blackout shades, our circadian lighting, purified air and water, low VOC paint, maybe it's balconies with connections to the outside. Um, you know, these are all, all small things that we can start to do so that all of these wonderful um, initiatives we're taking in our amenity spaces are being applied into, into your actual home units and, and, the, and the private spaces. Something we've also kind of looked at and, and thought could be really kind of um, an answer to the cost issue is instead of having the RO reverse 
and see water in, in each of the units, perhaps it's something that's just at each of the elevator lobbies or every other elevator lobby so that it's accessible to all of our residents and it's still something that they can use, but it doesn't need to be in every one so we can save a little bit of cost there. Thanks, Alana. So next we have outdoor spaces. And this idea is something that we've, we've been following and we're seeing it being accelerated and a little bit amplified by our current COVID conversation. So we know that we love the outdoors. We've seen and we've been all having these conversations with all of you about many amenities moving outside or really blending the inside and the outside as a trend sort of a response to biophilia. And here we're just saying the longer that we're looking at our screens, which now, you know, we're all doing right now, we're interacting with all of our meetings are on screens now and we're getting so saturated with screen, screen, screen. And really the antidote is to go outside and look at the sky for a little bit and look at the trees. So we're, we love the idea of this blending of indoor and outdoor and we're really seeing this accelerate as we all feel a bit safer socializing in these outdoor spaces with fresh air. So this section is all about some amenities and different things we can do to really activate those outdoor areas. So one of the first spaces that we, we kind of want tend to look at are some of our lounge club spaces and making those open air. So really allowing for, for that connectivity to the outdoors, fresh, clean air, a lot of circulation throughout. And we're allowed then to move our amenities so that they can be indoor and outdoor. We should also look at conditioning these spaces, whether it's with you know, our, our fireplaces or fans, the misters, so that they are usable all year round. Um, we have a few projects where we're really looking at taking some of some of our, our corners, our edge spaces, and, you know, creating a, you know, our big sliding glass wall or a sliding glass door so that it can be opened up. And like Shay said before, one of the key things is, is, is we do not want stagnant air, not just for COVID, but just, just in general. Circulation is good in general. And if Fresh breeze is wonderful. Um, so we really want to start to find ways that we can kind of manipulate and use that. One thing we can do is looking at bringing our fitness outside. We see the code fitness at the bottom corner here. And it's super simple that the way they addressed it, it's just a garage door on the outside, on the exterior wall, and then you lift it, you can bring your rubber machines out, and all of a sudden you have an outdoor fitness that is really kind of blending those lines. The other great thing too, is when we see the amenities start to kind of bleed out, it's such a great way to connect to our community as a whole. It doesn't feel like this closed little compound. It really feels like just part of our, part of our community. Um, and then our, our sky gym, which is super fun and exciting. Um, you know, we always are looking at our, our sky places as, as sky lounges and bars and doing our supper clubs up there. But in the proper demographic, proper psychographic location, perhaps our fit well, something like this could be really clever and unique. You could do morning yoga, sunset yoga, but just the idea of being able to work out outside in this, you know, really kind of cool and unique environment is something we're going to start, we're going to start seeing a little bit more. Yes, and Alana mentioned the outdoor supper club, and here we have a whole slide about it. And so this is the idea that we're all getting takeout. We love takeout. We all like all hail Uber Eats 100%. But we're all like, where do you eat your takeout? It's like we're making takeout into an elevated experience by creating a beautiful branded outdoor space to order takeout with order takeout with all your friends meet up there. Maybe there's there's plates and there's there's cutlery up there to use. You can kind of plate up and serve yourself and make a bit of a more of a presentation about it. And that just makes takeout a little bit like elevated and more exciting and very social instead of just eating it out of the container in your in your bed in your pajamas. <laughs> <It's terrible. laughs> yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I oh, totally gosh. Fully support it, but sometimes, you, for need, it. <laughs> sometimes you need elevated takeout. <laughs> yeah, it's funny when you were saying that, I kept thinking in my head, it's, it's basically a restaurant, but you bring your own food, like bring your own beer, bring your own food. Yeah, <laughs> and the space would totally, we, we would have a multifunctional space. There would still be your grills up there so that you could 
have your standard food prep outdoor area, but we like the idea of branding it as this outdoor supper club because it feels very, it, very something that's very attainable to just order food, eat it up there. Yeah. Another element we can start to bring outside is co-working and working outside. Like Shay said, we are all so connected to our screens now more than ever. But, you know, understanding that's that's a vital part and it's it's kind of the way we're responding to the world now. Let's allow for that experience to be outside. So whether it's outdoor charging stations, outdoor desks, really cool, unique pieces of furniture like we see in this in this corner here that allows for you to kind of just plop up with your laptop or we even use, you know, actual office furniture in some of our you know, pergola canopy covered spaces, but really start to think about allowing for those, you know, these, these really great activities to happen outside of just our interior spaces. And not only do we, do we end up, you know, it, it's good for, good for everyone, but we get so much more usable amenity space when we can, you know, we can break, break the barriers. Uh, really well said, Alana. And this is a spotlight landscape forms and we love their outdoor work, outdoor co-working they have kind of a shade weather sort of pergola um, structure and then the tables and the connected power just makes it very comfortable to work outside and that takes us into our next section virtual programming this section is very inspired by our current covid virtual world um, and, and like we were talking about earlier, we're not sure what the return to, to, we're not sure what our social gatherings are going to look like or what our return to classes in the gym and yoga and all of that are going to look like. And even in the next few years, we might still have people who are less comfortable interacting. And we still know how important programming is to creating communities and creating strong communities and how that ties into retention. So. We really were inspired by this idea of having all the programming that we would normally have in our communities, but also offering a virtual component so that those who feel safer participating from their own unit in their own home or perhaps in a small group within their own home doing a little workout um, you know, activity together. So for example, we love that idea of extending it so that it's, it's really accessible for everybody virtually and in person as well. And we did a bit of research and found five virtual offerings that we think are really cool. So the first one is Obey Fitness, and we love their approach to fitness. Their branding is really cool. They have a ton of on-demand classes, um, 4,000, I think, on-demand classes ranging from cardio, dance, HIIT workouts, Pilates, yoga, stretch, so a really wide range. And then number two, Airbnb online experiences. I I personally have done an Airbnb experience when I was traveling and it was really fun, but I, through this research, saw that they're doing online experiences, which are really cool. I mean, the last one on this list is Sangria and Secrets with Drag Queens, so I don't know how that could not be a good time. And then- yeah, you and I should take a vacation and do that. I just- we, we talk about it every day. We should probably just sign up for the class and do it. <laughs> Um, and then number three is Class Pop, and they have a bunch of cooking classes, and these are great for groups too, so a whole group can get together um, and do this, this online class together and range in skill level. Number four is from the SIL, and they have plant workshops, and we just love including this because we know how important biophilia is and, you know, getting your hands in the dirt. It's good if you're in front of the computer all day. And then number five is Brit & Co. And they have sort of a, their class offerings are a little bit more creative leaning. But they have everything from uh, Photoshop for beginners and creating a winning Instagram strategy. So a little bit of in that kind of creative business world. So these are just five that we have. So speaking of fun and creative maintenance repair videos, <laughs> something Great. that could be really, really, really beneficial for residents. You know, they may not be comfortable having maintenance people come into their units or be the type of person who wants to kind of do it yourself. So how great would it be if, if, if our properties had these, had this little collection of maybe it's YouTube videos of maintenance repair videos. So it's how to's. So when it, it can assist residents to do super simple things, 
I can remember how many times I would wait for days for the mortgage repair man to come just to, just to flick a switch because I didn't know how to do that. So I would have benefited. Um, but it really gives residents a great sense of safety. I can do it myself, empowerment, learning, and it also allows for a really good kind of crowdsourcing community where who knows how to do what, and it allows for us to kind of all connect to, to one another and benefit. Speaking of together, um, our co-working, as, as we've kind of said throughout the presentation, is really looking at how co-working is going to change, how it may not change, and making sure we're being really thoughtful about the way that we're adapting. So, you know, we're looking at perhaps opening up our micro offices, still having these spaces, but perhaps not closing them in. Maybe we have tables that can actually move apart. So if you need a bigger conference space to kind of, you know, socially distance, you have it. Or if you want to kind of move your tables apart, you can have these private, private little moments. And um, you see this image over here with, with all of the different drapery, but perhaps this is something that we apply in our spaces that just help to add some, some, fluid, um, some, some, some fluid privacy. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that we, we, we are always looking at is, is who we're answering to with our coworking. It is, it's not just your people with the atypical working from home jobs anymore. It is everything from you know kind of you and i teachers schooling all of that is is really being kind of thrown into into something that we're we kind of all have to do ourselves now and i think shay that hands you off really nicely here <laughs> yeah you just set me right up thank you okay so that brings us to co-schooling so we're really inspired by the current every kid being homeschooled and virtual learning and i mean huge shout out to all the parents and everyone with kids at home who's working and teaching them. And it's yeah, like, yes, super admirable. cannot imagine what that must be like, but it was very inspiring for us for spaces that we have these co-working spaces and we know, like Alana said, they're being used in a variety of ways. And in some of our communities where we have more kids, we think it would be so great to have a co-schooling space. And although this was inspired by homeschool, which we may see increases in homeschool, because depending on where we are in the country, it's a little bit up in the air what will happen this next year. But even in the next few years, we may have some kids who really, kids and families who online school and homeschooling really works for them. And we may see a sort of a rise in homeschooling or even without homeschooling as part of the conversation, kids still need a spot to do their homework like these perfectly sized desks for our young people and the, you know, the heights are just perfect for them to sit down and do their homework. And this could be adjacent to the co-working area. We love this idea of including kids because they need a spot to do their homework too or homeschool. Yeah, they could feel just like their parents in their own little micro office doing their homework. Yeah. It'll inspire them. <laughs> just had like an imagination of of the like volcano sculptures just like everywhere <laughs> there's just Some like serious work and yeah yeah yes. it's just all like all volcanoes <laughs> I clearly don't know what kids do in school um okay so then we have the Sony Xperia touch projector and we actually it has the CID tested and approved little line there because we have one of these in our office and it's really cool it projects onto any surface and it's touch screen, which is what makes it really special. And we love including it here because it, it is super cleanable. That countertop that they're projecting on can easily be fully scrubbed down and it's ready for the next person. And then that brings us to our third section, indoor design to last. And here we're going to be discussing a few, just a few things on top five influences that we're looking at going forward. All right, so the first one that we look at is we always kind of look at fashion and see, see what's happening in the fashion industry. Most of the time fashion kind of is, is, the, is the first 
trendsetter and then it starts to fall back into all of the different kind of design disciplines but so we're really looking at how how fashion is changing and adapting and what we're seeing you know we're seeing kind of unexpected cutouts in our fashion um you know unique shapes kind of architectural forms and curves which we'll see repeated um in our global aesthetic also we're seeing new grunge so it's something where we're, we're taking this idea of kind of beauty and and almost elevating it, which is something that we can really use inspiring for our projects, um, you know, all the time. Also monochrome dressing, looking at our spaces where we may want to be really kind of clean and simple, but still finding ways to create layers. So looking at, you know, something that may be all the same color, but really exploring the, the textural difference between them to add that really nice, nice dimensionality to it. Also lots and lots of leather, um, fringe, fringe, and some of our shag. It's, it's interesting when you see kind of the way fashion ends up repeating itself and, and responding to different things, but we're starting to see some of those same shapes and, and, and colors being reintroduced. Um, our global aesthetic, we're always looking kind of to Europe and, and Australia overseas and seeing, you know, what they're doing because it's always so exciting and inspiring just the way things are approached from, from different, different areas of the world. We're really loving tile countertops. You know, we're seeing those kind of come back and, you know, we love it. We love the way that it ends up becoming a furniture piece. So if you want to do something kind of cool and funky, contrasting different colored grout, this is a great way to do it. Um, also the use of color and finding ways to, to really, really inject color into our spaces without them being over the top and in your face, you know, and also applying it to unique and unexpected elements, you know, perhaps it's on an I-beam in, in one of your spaces, or it's just a little shooter strip on the floor. Um, but, but really being inspired about thoughtful ways to add color. And then our arches, we are really starting to see a lot of curvature um and a lot of softer smoother lines in 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 our interior so it's something that we you know we're kind of excited to see how we can we can start to apply that to some of our spaces and then next is is color and material of course we are always looking at our our color forecasters so we've got pantone we've got our sherman williams everyone this year kind of went a little bit more in our in our blues sort of phase nothing too crazy but it also helps to respond you know to the time the blues the blue tones the biophilic tones really going back to nature with with everyone um, and then our materials are also kind of kind of raw and natural. We're seeing this beautiful resurgence of, of concrete and, and using breezeway blocks throughout spaces just to kind of create that open connectivity and airflow. We've got our raw woods, leathers, hand dyed materials, really, you know, exploring the, the craftsmanship of, of what it is that we're creating. Thanks, Alana. And number four here, we have our one to watch. And here we looked at Yves Behar. We're really inspired by his first 3D printed community and just what he's doing through this project to really revolutionize construction and sustainability and affordability and the cost of construction. So we're really looking forward to seeing what comes out of that and what the effects are throughout our industry. And then number five is our last one, which is global movements. And here we're always looking at something that's happening very globally, and we're not sure exactly how it will affect our industry yet, but something that we're tracking. And so for this last one, we're looking at human And in our last volume, which was volume 19, we looked at human connection and we were discussing how we're connect with each other when our relationships have become so reliant on screens. And then fast forward to this volume, we know that we're on screens all day because of our current global situation. So we're very curious with global or with human connection 2.0 to see how we've learned how vital our humanity to our humanity connecting with each other in person is. And we're really looking forward to seeing what happens socially as we return to each other and what our social gatherings will look like and how, and, and how, you know, kind of in the end that will affect how we're designing spaces. So this is our sort of our big idea that we're leaving off with today. Um, so 
we, this is the end of our presentation. And we want to thank everyone for taking the time to tune in today. We know it's a big time commitment and we appreciate it. Please reach out to us if you did not receive the full electronic version of our forecast. This is just a snippet of it. This one's kind of a long one. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff in there, a lot of stuff that we think is, we hope is really helpful. And we'd love to open it up to questions. I'm gonna check our chat to see if anybody popped anything in. You still there, Shay? I'm still here. Yep. Yeah. I'm just checking the chat. Yeah. 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 Sorry, so I lost thank you for a second. No, no, I'm still here. So thank you um, all. I was going to add to that yeah. real quick. You know, reach out to us with any questions too. If there's anything Absolutely. you want to talk about more or something you have an idea about or insight, this that says here the re resources, we are each other's resources. So we're always looking to collaborate and any sort of you know, new information and, and new sharing is, is always open to us. Yes, thank you, Alana. And this volume specifically, just with, with all that's going on and the uncertainty, we definitely, I definitely feel that this was our most collaborative volume yet. And I think that's what made it feel, so I don't know, extra approachable, or we're kind of experiencing a sense of unity because we're all going through something so similar, but um, this was a really, really interesting and fun volume to work on. Yeah. So I think with, with that being said, that, that is, that is the conclusion yeah, of, our, I think so. of our webinar. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Um, you know, have a, have a great rest of the day. Yes, please do. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your day.